Ring the dinner bell for Trout, Kokanee, and Landlocked Kings with Kel Kellogg's Willow Leaf Dodgers. Available in mini and magnum sizes at fishhuntshoot.com. Get yours today. It's Kel Kellogg here. It is Sunday morning. Lucy and I are out for our hike. There's been quite a few cars about, so if a car comes by, I'll stop and pick it up where I left off once the car passes. Um, what I want to talk about today is stained cold water and how it relates to lure selection for trout. Basically how it, how it relates to your entire approach when trout trolling. Now in the past I, I've trolled my share of you know cold water and stained water but uh, honestly for the last 15 years when I was part of the Fish Niffer magazine my, uh, my January and February's were consumed with doing special inserts, managing show booths, stuff like that. And I typically didn't fish a whole lot from say Christmas until the first week of March. Well, I'm no longer with the fish sniffer and this has been the first winter in a long time when I've been out on the water a great deal. And uh, I've been encountering stained water and cold water and uh, I've got some observations. I, I've learned a lot um, and I've, I've added to the knowledge that I already had. You know, I always knew that, or at least I always felt that color was less important than vibration because I felt the trout were homing in on your lure using their lateral line. And uh, you know, I, 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 I stick to that thought process, but I have been using a lot of bright colored lures. Um, if color doesn't matter, I figure I might as well go with the super bright stuff just in case it does matter in a certain situation. I've been going with bright top lures with chrome backs. I've been trying to get, you know, as much flash out there as possible. I've been trying to run with some UV stuff. Um, that hasn't seemed to make a huge difference, um, but uh, I have been leaning towards the bright colored stuff. I've been running the chartreuse the orange, um, hot pink, stuff like that. And I've been picking up fish on those lures, but those are the lures I've been running. Okay, I think a much more important factor in my success has been the idea of maximum vibration and slowing down, okay? I've, I've slowed down my basic trolling speed to 1.5 to two miles an hour. On an ordinary spring day, you know, I'm trolling much faster than that. I'm trolling 2.5 to three miles an hour a lot of the time, but that's changed in this stained water. I've found that fast trolling just isn't producing any hits for me. Um, so I've been running, you know, the turbo flashers, the micro turbos, I've been running the willow leaf dodgers. I just been running stuff that I can run slowly that's gonna put out a maximum amount of vibration and also a, a good amount of flash. So that's been one key to my success. The other key has been adding, you know, natural bait. I'm sure scent makes a difference in, in cloudy, cold water, but uh, nothing makes a difference as, as much as putting a piece of night crawler on the hook. I have a lot of fish come in, sample the worm and bite it and chew on it and bite it and chew on it and keep, they keep coming back until they end up on the hook. And I know if I didn't have worm tipping those lures, I would not have caught those fish. So, you know, in addition to putting out maximum vibration, I think slowing down and tipping your lures is essential to maximize success when the water is cold and cloudy. Um, the other thing I found is typically I, I catch a lot of my fish in the top 10 feet of the water column when the, when the water temperature is cool like it is right now. But uh, I've actually found that the deeper fish 15 to 20 feet deep in many cases have been the fish that are most willing to go, the fish that are most willing to bite. So I've slowed down, I'm tipping, I'm, I'm you know, ramping up the vibration, and uh, I'm fishing a little bit deeper than I ordinarily would. And that has been my, my kind of recipe for success recently. The fishing is, is far from wide open, but I've been catching fish pretty much every trip out, um, couple days I got limits you know but I've been having fun I've been having productive trips now in the broad view I think cloudy water is a benefit I think that's why a, a place like Lake Davis fishes so well the water is always cloudy there it's full of nutrients but the difference between the water at Davis when I'm up there in the spring and in the fall catching a bunch of fish and the water I've been fishing now 
is temperature. I've been fishing water that ranges anywhere from 38 degrees on the low end into the mid 40s. Um, once in a while at Collins, I've been fishing water that's, you know, 49 to 50 degrees. But by and large, the water I've been fishing has been very, very cold. So I think that in itself, you know, is a situation where you need to slow down combine that with the lack of clarity and uh, you, you've really got to slow down and you've really got to run that stuff that puts out a lot of vibration and stays in the strike zone for an extended period of time. Um, that's about it for this topic. I've rambled on for a while. I hope that helps you if you get out on the water and you encounter, you know, cold water, stained water, stuff like that. Don't despair. You can absolutely catch trout in those conditions. You can catch some nice trout in those conditions, but you have to adapt your uh, approach to the conditions. This is not the time to be pounding along with a, with a small Rapala at three and a half miles an hour. I'm not reaching for my speed spoons right now. I'm reaching for my turbo flashers, my willow leaves, and I'm reaching for lures that I can tip with worm. You know, trigger juniors, my little bugs, tubes, stuff like that. Stuff that's gonna stay in the strike zone for an extended period of time, stuff that has real meat on it, stuff that the fish can gnaw on a little bit, get their confidence up. Remember, they're cold, they're lethargic. And final thought, under those conditions, often your best action is gonna come during the warmest part of the day. I've been doing my best between 10 and one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I haven't had a lot of early bites. I haven't had many bites after one, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon. That sweet spot between 10 and one has been by far the most productive time for me to be on the water because that's when the water temperature spikes up, you know, to a maximum level and that's when the fish feel most comfortable. That's when the feeding window exists right now. That's gonna change moving forward. We're gonna start getting an early bite and we're gonna have an afternoon bite and we're gonna have bites when there's breeze and stuff like that. But right now, temperature, temperature has been the key in driving that bite window. I'm signing off for now. If you're looking for trout gear, you know where to go, fishhuntshoot.com. I gotta get on the hike here. I gotta get back to the truck, go home and have some Sunday breakfast with my wife. Um, you guys stay healthy, stay happy, and I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah.